The weekend, Justin Bieber, Snoop Dogg, BTS have one person in common, Jason Joshua. Has partnered with newcomers Cradle Apps to bring you his first signature plugin, the God Particle. The God Particle is available for Windows and Mac as an audio unit's VST3 and AAX plugin. The marketing says this plugin is beyond super analog, and I gotta be honest, I have no idea what that means. Maybe you do, and you can leave a comment below explaining to me so I'm not ill advised on whatever new buzzwords are out there. But to me, it just sounds like another company using fancy buzzwords to try to push a product. From what I can gather from the videos on the website, is they've taken Jason's hybrid mix bus setup and they've turned it into one plugin. But there's no details on what exact processors are used to make this plugin. The layout is straightforward. You have an input which allows you to adjust how much gain is hitting the internal processor, and the green brackets are the sweet spot you want to adjust the input to. Next is the three band EQ, which feeds into the processor. Next is the heart of the God particle, which allows you to control the amount of processing you're applying to the signal. Next is another set of meters with green brackets for sweet spots for the low, mid, and high-end frequencies. There is also a limiter for loudness and an output for fine-tuning. And lastly, there is an internal and external sidechain input alongside an adjustable user interface. Let's talk about the bad. Aside from the terrible website and the terrible marketing, beyond super analog, and also Cradle apps speculating that the God Particle may be the first plugin to have ever been used for an Oscar-winning track before it was publicly released. I mean... I guess, I, I I don't know what to do with that information, but uh, congrats to, to you guys. I don't even know why that's on the website. The website is clunky as well, even by plugin company standards. And I didn't appreciate that when you're looking at the product page for the God Particle, you can't find the manual. And even in the plugin, you can't just click something to find the manual. What you have to do is on the website, go to the search bar, type in the God Particle, and then scroll down to find the article that has the three sub articles about the plugin. I mean, I get that the plugin's pretty straightforward, but some of us like to read the manual just to see what we're getting into. Or maybe there's some hidden features that aren't obvious to us. The next issue that I have is it's usually typical in audio to have between a 14 to 30 day trial period on average. I know some companies do seven, but on average, you're given between seven and 30 days. But Cradle Apps have decided for whatever reason to be the industry leaders in five day trial. I mean, even Waves gives you seven days. And if you're curious about oversampling, there is no oversampling in this plugin, which is kind of a letdown. In my last two issues with the God Particle is that there is no AB comparison option. So if you want to make two slightly tweaks and then hear the differences, that option is not available to you within the plugin. And there's also no additional mix knob. I understand there's an amount control for how much of the processing we want, but it would be nice to have the amount of processing and then another mix knob so we can dial it in just perfectly to how we want it to sound. There's plenty of videos using the God Particle on hip hop, trap, rap, and pop music. So in this video, out of curiosity, I want to see how God Particle stacks up on rock tracks. So this pop punk track isn't a full mix. I like to think of this as like a production mix, meaning the tones are kind of in a nice spot, but it's still flexible enough to where you can mix even further if you want to. So I'm going to play this track raw, then I'm going to enable my two bus process Processing, and from there, we'll turn that off and then we'll bring in the God Particle, see what it does there. Then we'll AB my mix bus chain to the God Particle chain. Nothing too special, now let's enable the mix bus. that's in a pretty comfortable spot for a production style track and if you're not familiar with this approach this is essentially a top-down mixing approach meaning you have what your final bus stage at the end is going to sound like and then you work your way down now let's turn off that chain let's go find the god particle and i'm just going to press play and let's see what happens just sounds louder All right, so let's see where everything's dialed in, if everything's hitting each spot where it's supposed to. So this sounds like a dark mix going into the God Particle, so let's bring up an EQ so we can brine that sucker up a little bit to see if it sounds better. Right, let's leave that open over here. So for this particular track that's at a production state, even with the high end boosted all the way, it's still not enough to hit the sweet spot. But as I'm bringing in this external EQ and boosting into the God Particle, it's starting to give it more life. See how it sounds warmer or less exciting?
And now it's starting to poke out a little bit from this sweet spot. Let's compare between the God particle and my previous chain. I can't lie, I like what it's doing on this track compared to my current chain. I'm not like wowed, but that's pretty cool. All right, so that's enough of this pop punk track. Let's go try something a little bit heavier. So this last example is a metalcore style track. So I'm gonna play the track just raw with no mix bus processing, and then we'll bring in the God particle bypass and then bring in the two bus processing that I had prior and A, B it and see what we prefer. Bring in the God Particle. Oh, let's hear the chorus. I do feel like the vocals get buried when the God Particle gets introduced. And this is across the board on all the tracks I've noticed is there's something that this particular plugin does in the mid range. I don't know if I like it or dislike it. And I kind of want to push this plugin on this track too, because I want to hear if it distorts with that limiter. So let's do that real fast. Now let's go to this previous chain and let's bring up the self limiter. So how far was I able to push it? So I was able to push it up to seven more on the God Particle limiter. Push it a little bit more on the God Particle. I kind of prefer the sound of the Stealth Limiter over the God Particle. Limiter. The Limiter on the on the God Particle just feels like it hits a limit where it doesn't really do anything after a certain point. Not too shabby. And for any of you CPU warriors out there wondering, well, how hard you do on CPU? To be honest, I think it's fine. It's If your system's powerful enough, I don't think it's gonna make a dent. It didn't do anything on either one of these sessions that I had stuff going on. And I'm more than comfortable if I was to bring in more elements and more plugins and processing. I don't think it was gonna bog down my system too much. So I don't love or hate the God Particle. And to be honest, I think this plugin is more catered for people who are producer engineer types who aren't gonna necessarily mix their own tracks, but need something to glue everything together that's gonna make it sound great while they're tracking and working with artists. People who are more experienced mixers who already have their tools and their chains and they know what they like. I don't think this plugin does anything that is going to wow you. There were some times where I was like, oh, I could just use this plugin or that plugin. Now I do think out of these mixed down type plugins, this is probably one of the better ones out there. I think like the leaders are right now like this CLA mix down and the Craig Wills mix centric. But if someone's like a newer type producer or someone who's just like a home hobbyist who's just wants their tracks to sound great right out the get go, I would recommend this and Ozone. And I would say just throw those two on your map master faders or your mix buses, whatever, and just be done with it. And if you're someone who is going to use this plugin because you like the way it sounds, but you're wondering, should I turn off the limiter before sending it to a mastering house or a mastering engineer, or if I'm gonna master it myself, I would recommend that you do turn off the limiter when you're at that stage to get it mastered and just use the limiter for the loudness while you're working through it and then turn that off and then bring in your mastering chain or before you send it off. If you've gotten this far and enjoyed the video, do us a favor and boop that like button below for the almighty YouTube algorithm. We greatly appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video.